Yes, welcome back. This is F for Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16, founder and creator of Plates and Crates. And no, I never rock lugs, I'm way above. If you haven't put two and two together, that means one, you did not watch the category one review of the album that we're talking about today. So you might wanna go back and do that. And while you're at it, like and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell so you can be up on all the classic 1996 albums that we go through for the rest of the year as part of our 1996 for the rest of the year campaign. But yes, welcome. This is category two, where we go over the rap performance on the album, and the very album that we happen to be going over today is the solo debut from Ghostface Killer, Iron Man. Now, first dimension in category two, it's about rap performance, is going to be dimension one, personality and charisma. And if we are talking about Ghostface Killer, Tony Starks, Dennis Coles, whatever you call them, Ghost Dini, at this time, you know, it was Ghostface. Ghostface is easily one of the top five rappers that's gonna pop into people's mind when they think about who oozes, saturates personality on the mic, on record. Um, it's just, it's his calling card. It is what he is known for more than anything else. This is where charisma goes a long way. And, and I don't think a lot of people realize, the casual hip hop fan doesn't realize how much charisma plays a part and why they get so passionate and debate who their favorite rappers are. Uh, that's why this category exists, so we can really look at how much that charisma compels you to keep listening and sometimes make sense of things that don't make sense. Um, and so, you know, Ghostface is a great example of that <laughs> because Ghostface carries you into these worlds that, you know, we mentioned in the first video, unexplored in hip hop at that point, at least not in the way that he had, and with, with a feel. There's a soul and a passion that comes in the rhymes, but there's also a humor. There's a lot of nostalgia. Uh, we talked about how Ghost picked the skits and let the skits speak for him for a lot of songs. The beat spoke for Ghost on a lot of songs, but most importantly, Ghost spoke. Ghost injects a lot of old school imagery from the era where he grew up. And you could tell these things were important to him. You're gonna hear the nostalgia, from Ghost, you're gonna hear the humor from Ghost, you're gonna hear the aggression from Ghost, you're gonna hear the seriousness, the contemplation, you get all of that from him throughout the album. And you almost start feeling like you know him because of that. It, you know, we mentioned how that Ghost has this habit of dropping random names all throughout songs, no matter whose project he's on, he's gonna shout somebody out. And sometimes it's because the names are just convenient, sometimes it really has you scratching your heads, like, are these real people? And again, by the time it's all done, you feel like these are people you might run into, people who have touched Ghost's life, and Ghost wants you to feel what he felt. And uh, I think it's just in a, in a very interesting and not easy to pull off quality, um, similar to the other famous member of Wu-Tang Clan, Old Dirty Bastard, who was, you know, guilty of that same effect of just pulling you in with their personality, even if the rhyme set is not that advanced. Um, I think the difference here is that Ghostface is, is more of a sympathetic character um, on wax. I think maybe Old Dirty was a sympathetic character in real life, but his abrasiveness sometimes was hard to escape. With Ghost, the abrasiveness here, you almost forget some of the more wild lines on here, you know, like there was there was some wild things said on the song Wild Flower and some other tracks, but it becomes forgivable because Ghost also shares this vulnerability, which we talked about in, in video one, that other rappers just weren't sharing at that time. And, and to this day, you don't get as many rappers uh, being able to be as effective as Ghostface. So something to consider on the scale from one to five heartbeats that takes us to dimension two, which is the believability or the suspension of disbelief. Now, Ghost goes in states in, in articles that reflect on the making of this album that not only was this a dark time in his life, he said he was still involved in the streets. And he points out this particular incident where he had the Delphonics riding in the car behind him and he was in an active shootout. 
And it's just crazy that any Wu-Tang member after the 1993 release of Into the 36 Chambers would be in a position where they still wanted or mm. needed to connect with the streets that deeply to be involved uh, in life or death situations. So it's actually unclear whether this album is asking you to suspend disbelief mm. on tracks like 260 or Motherless Child where there's storytelling about you know the, these active shootings and, and drug heists and, and you know attempted murders if, if Ghost is using pieces of his true experiences or if he's just trying to paint a picture fictionally either way it seems like there's so much believability of where he's coming from that these could be hybrids of both fictional and autobiographical uh, elements and for most of the most hip-hop fans that's what you're hoping you're getting right you're hoping you're getting uh, exaggerations of real life that the rapper led and it's not all just like a lie yeah if, if that's being asked um, then it's up to you to decide how well it was executed like if you you know the mission is to suspend your disbelief and not believe that Ghost and Raekwon are really going up in the apartment 260 to like you know shoot the the other drug dealer and ask his uh, fiend out you know <laughs> customer where where the stash is then you know how good of a job was it done uh it, it, it's very cinematic uh same thing with motherless child do you believe that goes to telling the story about people we actually knew you know this man really get shot in the ass and broke mega glass and if not how scorsese like was he with painting that picture did you get lost in the story for that track um and then for the other parts do you believe when when go says you know, they got jerked at the Source Awards next year, 200 of them running up with swords. Like, I believe that. I believe Wu-Tang was that wild at that point, and they say that they were wild at that point. Remember, Ghostface is the guy that, you know, said F Hot 97 for not playing their records during Summer Jam, getting them banned for the rest of the 90s from that radio station in New York City. So, um, anything's possible. <laughs> but yeah, these are the aspects where his personality comes in again which pulls you into this world where you're like, I believe Ghost could do this or I don't. And that's always a question that's up to you to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. Takes us to the next dimension, dimension three, delivery and use of voice. Wow, this is the other thing that you're gonna see Ghost come up probably in the top five where you talk about the most distinctive voices in hip hop history. There's a, a natural slur to Ghostface voice there's a strong, thick New York accent to Ghostface voice, but it's that high pitch push, and you can hear Ghost breathing on this album too. That's another thing. Uh, so you can tell how raw it is. It's coming from a guttural place. It's coming from the gut, but it comes out through the nose. And I used the word whiny in the first video, but respectfully because what, what Ghostface does is exaggerate his voice when he's projecting. Uh, you know, his speaking voice is not 100% the same as his rapping voice. Uh, so he exaggerates, but his style, his mode of projection still comes from up here. And, you know, it has its tonalities. We talked about how, you know, on contemplative tracks, you're gonna hear the contemplation. Whatever Ghost emotes, his style of projection adapts to the emotion that's being displayed. So when he wants to be softer and sensitive, you're gonna get that on songs like Can May and All That I Got Is You, there's gonna be a little toning down. But on songs like Poisonous Darts and Winter Wars, he's at full, you know, push mode. Um, in, in reflective articles on this album, RZA had mentioned that Ghostface voice sounds different because some of the vocals or some of the recording got distorted um, after the flood in his home where things had to be re-recorded or things were salvaged. Another thing that also naturally happened, we're talking about a lot of Ghostface's vocals on the 1993 debut into the 36 Chambers for Wu-Tang were recorded, you know, a year or two prior. So we're talking about, you know, the natural evolution of someone's voice, especially someone who smokes um, regularly, uh, lots of things, um, going from a five or four year difference, uh, you know, it's naturally going to evolve. And so there's, there's different tracks where Ghost sounds deeper. I think Motherless Child, Ghost sounds deeper than he sounds 
on Iron Maiden. So, but it's the way it's used. I think Ghost's awareness of his voice as the, the golden piece of the songs is very high. He knew that. Same way Method Man knew that his voice was the jewel. Um, Ghost plays it to full effect here. The great thing about having such a distinct voice and approach and flow on the mic is how it is contrasted with your guests. And Ghost's voice is so animated and it pops so much that you pair him with anyone except for someone who, who may sound just like him and it becomes a complimentary situation. So you put Ghost with Master Killer who has the deep slow tone. You put Ghost with Ray who has more of a rasp. You could you put Ghost with Cap who has more of a raspy whine. Um, and you put him with Meth of course who has more of the gravel. All of these are gonna be and, and Inspect the Deck who's gonna cut across with this crispness and Rizzo with this kind of marbled voice. They, they all just match. And then you put them with singers. Um, it's what you didn't know you needed. Hearing Ghost with a Delphonics background, hearing Ghost with Force MDs, hearing Ghost with Mary J. Blige, the contrast is there in almost every situation on this album. And um, depending on, again, what emotion he wants to evoke, um, he's gonna manipulate his voice to, to get that across. And it's a very distinct voice. This, you know, I, we stated this, there's many rappers who have come after Ghost to sound like Ghost, but none before. So, something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. That takes us to dimension four, the flow. Let's talk about it, right? There's different speeds, there's notches. There's like knots, like when you're on a jet ski. We talk about a song like Daytona 500, where he's going at full speed. Winter Wars, going at full speed. But then you also get these slower flows, um, like the ones you get on Fish. All that I got is you is Ghost at his slowest, where he's really dragging out each uh, syllable and making them land softly with the piano keys. Ghost is really um, technical at matching the beat. If the beat is up tempo, Ghost is gonna go up tempo. If the drums land in a certain place, uh, Ghost allows his consonant sounds to land where those drums go. Um, th there is a methodology here. So with the higher speeds, or with the faster speeds come more syllables, with the slower speeds come less syllables, uh, but Ghost breaks up with sing-songy, uh, depending on his mood, depending on where he wants to inject nostalgia or humor, there'll be sing-songy things, like when he's like, odd, say Starksologist, Starksologist, and then these like randomized shifts in flow pattern. He'll go from one to another, but they'll all thread together. You can tell there's punches here. Wu-Tang in the early days were really, you know, <laughs> really heavy on the punching in, but making it sound seamless is a part of the art. Uh, the punch is not supposed to be obvious. It, to, to a train here, you're like, oh, I can tell they punched there for the sake of breath. Um, as far as flow, though, the structures change. You know, within a 16-bar verse, you're going to at least get two different flow patterns that come from these punched-in places. Uh, he's going to be like, Anyway, back to furry kangos, Jamaican wallabies, my back's against the wall, bombing devils with technology, my heart's cold like Russia, got jerked at the source of words. You hear the punch, the changing in the inflection, and the pacing of the flow switches right where that punch comes. So right after bombing devils with technology, my heart's cold like Russia, got jerked at the source of words. He does that all throughout the album. So those little quick shifts, but... Again, it's it's how you tie them together. It's not enough to jolt or take the listener out of the flow at all. And, and as far as flows with the guests, you're ready to hear the different flows because again, you pair Ghost with a master killer who's gonna take things really slow where Ghost is going rapid fire, it works. You put Ghost with Ray, Ray's going rapid fire at a different pacing and with more of a, a, a different, he's hitting the beat at different parts. Uh, Meth is putting, hitting the beat at different parts because he's spacing out his lines, coming back, picking up in different places. Something to consider on a scale from one to five. Heartbeats, that takes us to dimension five. Wordplay and bar intent. Oh, wow. 
All right, now the third thing that you're gonna see Ghost's name pop up in, uh, or hear Ghost's name pop up in top five conversations is how Ghost chooses to use words. Um, Ghost is in there, is, is in that same book with E-40 and Nori uh, as one of the rappers who just has sprinkled the game with all kinds of different slang language. And in the Daylight episode, uh, episode 12.5, we talked about how True Goy from Daylight uses what I call abstract language juxtaposition. You would think that's what Ghost uses here, but unlike True Goy and other rappers that sometimes just use words and don't care whether the audience gets it, Ghost, you know, he said he doesn't care if the audience gets it in a different way. He said it more like, I want them to catch up, I want them to have to think. And that's a difference there, where Ghost leaves Easter eggs. He leaves breadcrumbs, and what he does is slang replacement. Ghost is going to put it in a context. He keeps the context. That's the difference between abstract language juxtaposition and slang replacement. Ghost maintains the context. When he says, we gotta get them, baby. Aliens are snatching our bread. UFOs moving in with bigger plants than feds. You still, you know, if you, if you still understand that he means something foreign, someone foreign is moving in on a territory and we can't let them do that. He's just using different slang to say it. Uh, I think sometimes the rappers who use abstract language juxtapositions, those two sentences will not go together. You're not gonna get a full, uh, full out finished thought, a complete thought of aliens are snatching our bread, UFOs moving in with bigger plans than feds. You might get aliens are snatching our bread and the next line goes somewhere else. So that's the difference. Ghost injects his brand of slang everywhere throughout this album. Every other line is like that. That also helps. You get a regular phraseology and then you get ghost phraseology for another line. There's enough foundation created here where you're able to follow and not get too lost. I hate that I keep mentioning E-40, but E-40 has that similar effect. I don't think anyone ever scratches their head when, you know, E-40 is like, I gotta get my Yola and, you know, we got it, we followed along, you know? If he's saying batches or botches, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. And sometimes, yes, sometimes, the lines just don't make any sense and it's just about the feeling like, let go my ego so we can dip, dip, dive a glego. And of course, the other Wu-Tang members as guests bring their own individual brands of wordplay. You're expecting a lot of uh, sharp imagery from Inspector Deck. You're expecting a lot of stark, no pun intended, imagery from RZA. Um, and you're expecting you know, punchlines from Method Man. Uh, which takes us to the next dimension. So these are all things to consider when you're thinking about the wordplay on a scale from one to five heartbeats. That takes us to dimension six, punchlines, poetic wisdom, and overall quotability. Ghost has been quoted many times. With that, Ghost is able to also create punchlines in new ways. He's not also saying things in the ABC way because you get to use these different words to still create these punchlines while keeping the context. So, um, Ghost does not fashion himself as a punchline rapper. I don't think he's recognized as a punchline rapper. They exist on air as they do on most rap albums in some shape or form, but that's not what Ghost was going for. Uh, more for description, more for imagery, more for unique ways of putting, you know, pictures together in your mind. Um, you're gonna get poetic wisdom on the more contemplative songs and just in, you know, the 5% kind of language that gets sprinkled throughout most Wu-Tang albums. They're in there. In the midst of saying something completely ignorant and maybe violent, you know, the next line might be something like, <laughs> that has to do with a 5% teaching and, and knowledge itself. And then quotability comes, I think, mostly from, you know, outlandish, outrageous, or humorous things that are said, like the whole interaction with the fictional woman in Cam A, where he's like, can you cook, darling, at the stove? You're revolving, he goes and talks about what he wants her to cook, baked macaroni, turkey wings, it's just, you saying that, you know, um, Blonde has inscriptions with three sixes in, I slap box with Jesus, 
Slick Shots with, jo with Joseph. Um, who's saying stuff like that? Different ways of saying how he's ill, new ways of saying how he's ill. So quotability all through here. I think a lot of people like the lines that were, you know, uh, delivered on Wildflower because Ghost got to speak for a lot of heartbroken males, especially young males who hold those kind of thoughts and feelings of retaliation and disrespectful get back. Young men tend to love songs like that where, you know, the dude gets overly disrespectful to, to a woman uh, with the justification that she did something scandalous, right? But on that track, Ghost mentions sex in, in ways. It's just bad. And we, we tend to overlook things like that in hip hop history. Like, you know, when Raekwon, you know, mentions that he uh, pointed the gat at some dude's mother's head and, and we just kind of recite it like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I think, you know, Raekwon looking back whether that was a real situation or not, it's like, whoa, that was that was a, a really terrible thing. <laughs> um, and so, you know, the quotability comes from ghosts saying things in new ways and, and, and adding lots of life to how he says things. So it's, it's all over here. Meth Man, I mentioned, brings the punchlines. You know, on, on his feature on Boxing Hand, almost every line, just his whole verse is sprinkled with punchlines. No one else seems to go for that on this album besides Meth. Something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats, how much poetic wisdom, punchlines, and portability is all throughout this album to be found. It takes us to Dimension 7, Concepts. Concepts will be found on this album. 260 is a concept. It's both a story and a concept. Most of the concepts come in the form of stories. Um, but then let's talk about um, the conceptual elements of some songs. So the way Cam May is approached uh, as all three of the rappers, Raekwon, Capadonna, and Ghostface talking to different women in different scenarios, that's conceptual. The album itself is kind of conceptual with the mood and tone that's put uh, together, but let's let's keep that as as let's keep that in the conversation of, of possible loose concepts. But um, something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats that takes us to the content dimensions, dimensions eight and nine. Dimension eight being externalized content, where the rappers talking about things outside of themselves, just things in their world, things in the world, social ills, environmental things, neighborhood things, government things, life things. And dimension nine, content internalized, where the rapper is doing more internal reflection, internal monologue, feelings-based, autobiographical stuff. Uh, you're definitely getting more of the internal content than external. Ghost doesn't have any songs on here where he's really addressing anything socially or outside of his world. Um, but you get such a big pull and, and you know open door into his world that you feel like, again, you know Ghost. That's through his personality, it's the way he puts things together and the kinds of songs that he makes. Yeah, Fish, there's moments on Fish. Uh, motherless child where you feel like okay he's talking from feelings you know at the end making a decision to say it was horrible at the end of motherless child lets you know that there's as much as motherless child felt like glorification of these stick up kids it's like no here's the moral of the story this is horrible no matter who came out the victor or the victim in this it was horrible um, all that I got is you shows, you know, Ghost's awareness of where he's come from, where he's going. Um, and again, you get it in sprinklings throughout the album. Um, so you're getting that more than anything yet. Yeah, there's no real songs where Ghost is speaking to big issues. Um, so the social consciousness only comes through like, again, those sprinklings of 5% um, ideology. Something to consider on a scale from one to five. Heartbeats in both dimensions, eight and nine, takes us to the final dimension, dimension 10, storytelling. Storytelling's evident and present throughout this entire album. Uh, Ghost favors rapping in a narrative format where he's describing people, describing scenes, describing things that took place uh, 
he, he prefers all, almost to rap in past tense. Most of the things on this album, he's rapping as if they happen and what he's going to do in response to that or reminding people what happened. Uh, so that in itself becomes this uh, narrative uh, approach. But there's straight up stories on here. We mentioned 260, we mentioned Motherless Child. Um, you know, then in the middle of verses, Ghost will go into story mode. Uh, in the middle of his Iron Maiden verse, he goes, you know, dead on the prosecutor, smack the juror. Me and my girl will run like Luke and Laura. Like, <laughs> just, it becomes cinematic again, even when it's in the middle of bragging. So, you know, Cam A, Raekwon chooses a uh, second person, uh, Capadonna does third person, and Ghost does second person. You're being descriptive in linear ways where you're following along with what happens in this exchange. And then all that I got is you, Ghost is telling the story of his life. So you're going from, you know, his childhood, how he wound up in Staten Island, to now where he's looking up at the stars <laughs> and contemplating, you know, and asking the universe, why is he here? So, you know, storytelling is all throughout this album. Different ways of telling stories, different kinds of stories, different emotions from each of those stories. Um, you know, these are the parts of the albums that I think pull the listeners in more than the others. You know, if you just like the aggressive, rah, rah, I'm coming out, spitting darts, <laughs> then cool. But I think why people love the album are for these storytelling elements. It's up to you to determine if those storytelling elements were strong, if they've lasted the test of time, and something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. And that has been our category two review of the 1996 classic solo debut album from Ghostface Killer Tony Starks himself, Iron Man. If you have not already, take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. I mentioned the notification bell. Very interested in making sure you get the latest episodes. And um, until then, y'all know what it is. F a rap critic. We talk about it while I live it. Word to meth. Soon.